Welcome to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Welcome everyone to another episode of Paint, Rest, Repeat. Laura and I are super excited because this week we have Luke Potkin from the Other Art Fair. He is the fair director, so he knows all about this fair and we're going to be chatting specifically about why you should bother participating, what you what they um, are looking for, what Luke looks for in the applications and also how to make it a good fair experience for you. So welcome, Luke. How are you? Hello. Thanks very much for having me. I'm good. I'm good. Although I should warn you mm. in the name of full transparency my oh. coffee grinder coffee bean grinder did not work this morning <laughs> all right we're doomed that's it you, you may struggle to get full sentences out of me but that is the reason why and I, no. i'm getting my alibi in early i know you've listened to some of our other episodes so i think you know that we're pretty organic it's all cool <laughs> it's fine just be you Okay. That, We're happy to run with whatever. We'll just probe you with questions because we do have lots of questions for our audience. So yeah, Fire it's going to be great. I, uh, <laughs> I, will, I will do my best to answer them fully. All right. So um, let's start with um, like a little intro to you. So you're now in this fair director role. And I think I might have looked at your LinkedIn profile. You've been doing that for four years. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, in terms of running the other art fair, yes. Yes. Um, and then my background really is, I, I, rather than coming through the arts route, I've very much come from an events route. Mm-hmm. Um, so my most, my previous role in London was actually running a, a, an interior design festival, really. Uh, so still had art component within that, but um, a bit broader in, in that respect. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, events is, art has always been a passion of mine. Events has been my career. And when I was able to fuse the two together, that was golden. Um, but I suppose what I'm really motivated by is that chance to bring people together. So events are that you bring people together, you, you help form these new connections, um, and whatever industry it's been that I've done that in the past, that's been the same, but I think it's especially true with something like an art fair where you're not only connecting artists with, you know, potential buyers, gallerists, or, you know, that side of the aisle, but also the other artists and that community, which I know you, you both talk a lot about, um, so yeah, you're kind of fostering those connections across both both sides of the aisle, really, which um, yeah, fantastic. Oh, that's so cool. Um, your job must be so rewarding, just being able to foster that sense of community. And Roz has had personal experience. You've been a participant in the art fair before, and yeah, yeah. you were talking about after the art fair, Roz, that um, there was that sense of community and bringing people together, and the vibe was really amazing. Um, so yeah, it just must be quite a rewarding experience to sort of see these artists and help them to showcase their work and foster them to grow um yeah um, no, it's so, it is totally rewarding in the sense that you what you work you know you, you you have that long build up where everything you're doing is is focused on these four days mm. um and obviously you, it then comes to life you know you know you're looking at a floor plan of you know, you're curating the artist, you're putting content in, you're planning every every component of it. And then suddenly all that work just comes to life, you know, in, in a sense, in a matter of hours. Um, so, yeah, that's a really fun part of it. And obviously, I think, um, you know, the appreciation we get from artists is such a big part of that as well. And the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of the roles I've had in the past, it's probably not been, you know, it, it, there's been more businesses. And so it's it's a little bit colder, whereas, you know, we get the opportunity to build these relationships with these artists ourselves and, you know, we want to support and champion them. Um, and, you know, then they're grateful for that opportunity. Um, not always, you know, some people, it, and it is a testing environment, mm. you know, it is, you learn so much, but um, yeah, it, it, you know, it is, it's, it's very raw and it's very tough to put your, your work out there and be there to kind of roll with the punches, whatever you comes your way. So it does take a bit of courage. So we're always grateful to people like Ros that have put themselves out there and done that because, um that's really the first step you know you've got to 
put yourself out there and 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 be open to whatever comes your way and however that whatever you get from that experience there's so many different types of things that you can get from an art fair it's, and you know often people are understandably focus on sales but there's a whole array of different things that actually the art fair can bring to your practice um which i'm sure you know we can talk in more detail about but yeah it's it's definitely rewarding to be really close to supporting artists in that journey yeah yeah and i mean that's something that was uh, the word the word of my week by the way is palpable i don't know why it just keeps on coming <laughs> <Good out. words. laughs> palpable but that what was really palpable during the, my my fair experience last year was the um authentic's not quite the right word i think the wholehearted support of the artists that are participating in the fair like from you and also maya who's part of your team i think it's maya or is it maya Maya, Maya, Maya yeah. sorry, very sorry, comfortable. Pronounce She's it. very used to people getting it wrong. Uh, it's all right. You I get Rose. It. I get Ross. It's fine. I, I get it. <laughs> just wrong with Maya. It, right? <laughs> the record show, her name's Maya. Maya, okay. Um, yeah, but from both of you was this just really authentic, wholehearted support of the artists who were putting themselves out there. And you, you two both did absolutely everything you possibly could do to support the artists there. And I think... Um, I feel like that's quite rare. I don't think that's a common thing. You know, I, I don't think I've participated in any other fair of that size, but I have done many markets and the support in those contexts is just, you know, they're there to help you to know where your stand is, but that's pretty <laughs> much it, you know. So, yeah, so just wanted to pass that on to you and also get that message out to other people as well who are considering potentially taking part in the other art fair. It is a really beautiful nurturing environment. Mm. Um yeah, I could just say so many things about. Oh, well, what you I, just said I think I think um, you know this. It, it, we can't do it. We can't do everything, and there's a huge amount of artists. We want to make sure we're as available as possible. You know, luckily over the years we've obviously got you know a, a following of artists. Some will, you know, many will have done the fair before. So then they kind of then become an extension of our team in that they're also there to support. You know, a first timer like you were in October. It was October, wasn't it? Yeah. It all, yeah. it all blurs into one. Yeah. <laughs> that's all, all right. When you join us in October, um, yeah. you know, hopefully, you know, and we'll curate mm. the plan as well to ensure that there's a good spread of, you know, veterans around so that they're an extension of us in terms of some of the nitty gritty of how, you know, how do I do this sale or, you know, what do I do now? So, um, but yeah, I think that's something that I always, you know, say to Mel, we need, you know, we've obviously got lots going on during the show, but as, you know, one of those things that should always be a priority whenever we don't have, a specific task to do to deliver the show is be out on the floor available to artists to answer questions and um you know give people a pep talk if they need it g them up if you know all of those kind of things um are really important to make sure the artists don't just feel like they've been thrown into the lion's den and left to fend for themselves so mm. yeah no, i'm glad you glad you felt that anyway yeah, that's good definitely because um, it can be quite a scary thing, especially for a first time fair experience to even get the courage to even apply and, you know, put their work out there to be judged. And then, you know, you're sort of worrying, like, is my work good enough to get into the fair? And then once you're actually there, it's like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, it can um, be quite overwhelming. So I love that you're talking about that community support the other artists that may have done the fair before, like that whole like encouragement and everything. Um, but maybe we could go back to in terms of like applications and like what you're looking for at the art fair, what types of um, creative work and like maybe just a bit of specifics. So uh, artists listening along can get a bit of an idea of, yeah, how to, um, send the best application to you yeah okay well yeah I mean I suppose we're really not prescriptive in terms of you know medium or, or or type of work or even price point you know we want it to be broad because actually you've got you know 10,000 people coming through during those four days and you know not every artist is going to speak to every visitor so breadth and range and diversity in terms of what we show at the show is you know really important which means really if you are a practicing artist um, the other art fair should should be relevant to you certainly if you're an independent artist you you know you can represent yourself in that environment in terms of what we're looking for though it obviously a really key thing and this is true of just being 
successful as an artist you know you may be very technically very good but you need to have a consistent body of work you need to have a body of work where you know the, the selection team can look at that and say okay you know i get what this person's about i understand their that whether it's an aesthetic whether it's a you know a topic whatever that might be um sometimes you will get applications where like i say it, it's no it, there's no questioning the talent of the artist but they're still in that phase of experimentation where they haven't really found what they're about or certainly don't have a body of work at that point where it's like this is this is me as an artist um so i think that's probably the most fundamental we and what we're not is um an organization that is looking at your credentials you know we ask that you we know ask the question because it's helpful to give some color to yeah. the application we do ask you know what your experience is but when we're speaking to the selection committee we're not saying um these are prerequisites because actually the real ethos that we have is that anyone should be able to get their work out there and and represent themselves and build a career in the arts um and really, we want to kind of change those power dynamics. And that's why the art fair was born. That You know, it's not about putting the hands in, putting the power into the hands of a small group of people that determine whether or not you are or are not worthy of, you know, the industry's attention. So it's breaking down that those barriers. Um, so I think, you know, artists may feel that they need to have shown their work before. Not true. You know, we've had artists often, probably at every show, there will be artists in the room that have never put their artwork in front of people before, uh, which is a, you know, going back to the rewarding experience. Those are the really rewarding moments because, because you know, for them, it's literally the first step. It's day one in their entire journey as a, you know, as an, as an artist, essentially. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's one of the most re rewarding times. Yeah, I love that. I think, you know, because um, I, I did an application for the fair when I participated in um, October and obviously part of the application is some written words. And I think for a lot of artists, you know, we sort of get a little bit nervous about the written word and we sort of feel like we're visual artists, you know, like <laughs> words might not be our thing. And so do how heavily do you judge that part of an application and do you, um, do you like properly try to dissect that or... Oh. No, I, I, it wouldn't be the make or break for sure mm -hmm. but I think part of that is also the it's it's learning those skills as well and mm -hmm. and so you know both with the application process you know the selection or indeed the rejection process then when you get to do the show the you know the prepping and the curating of your staff all of those things are part of the learning curve as an artist that you have to you know you have to be able to to you know to really cut through in the industry you need to be able to talk about your work you do need to be able to write about your work and that's something that you know if you go to art school which again plenty of our artists at the fair are self-taught and you know haven't set foot in an art school in their lives necessarily but uh when you do go to those art schools that is one of the things they are also working to train um their students to do is you know the business of being an artist and um things like writing about your work is and writing about who you are is an important part of that and it also then informs you when you get to the show if you're put on the spot and you meet someone they're like okay so tell me your deal you know you've, you've got a little bit of a sense of how you're presenting yourself as an artist um and if you don't have it by the time the show starts you'll certainly have it by the time the show ends mm. <laughs> that's the ultimate test where you're put in those position where you you know you have to think of your feet and and that will put you in really good stead when you then are speaking to a gallery uh, or, you know, in anything you do in the future, that will be a useful thing to have in your arsenal. Um, this is just, you know what, this is vibing for me. Sorry, I dom I tend to dominate these interviews. So I'm going to throw to you, Laura, in a second. But is um, that it's a growth opportunity. You know, just the application is a growth opportunity because you've got to sit there and go, do I have a consistent body of work? Can I put some words to this? Do I know who I am as an artist? And then you put your best foot forward in the application. And yes. yes, you might be rejected. That's also part of the journey. You have to learn how to cope with that yes. and then yes. move on to the next stage. But it's a growth opportunity, the whole thing. What do you think, Laura? I think anything in your art career is a growth opportunity. And the more that you can put yourself out there, the more you're going to stretch and grow. And, you know, 
I think it's amazing. But um, Luke, you talked about um, if you're talking to a gallery. So I just wanted to go back to like the benefits, oh. why people should be applying for the fair. So just curious, because I've never done one before. Um, I'm assuming that there potentially might be interior designers walking around. There might be gallery owners like scouting for new work or to represent people. Is that something that you find in the, at the art fair? Yeah, 100%. I mean, and that's obviously part of our work is to bring in that crowd. So I think that's what you know, the other art fair is quite unique in the sense that obviously it caters to the art crowd, you know, especially ones that want to discover independent artists and and, and essentially up and coming artists that haven't been out there before at an early stage in their career, uh, which is great for, for gallery owners and, and like you say, interior designers, all, all of those groups of people are definitely in our targets to, to bring to the fair. Uh, but then another part of it is is people that may have not been in a commercial art space before and to make it an accessible place for them to be, to build up a new audience of people that will then go to group shows and go you know go to solo shows and, and sort of bring them into this world so our reach is really far and wide which is why you end up getting you know ten thousand people there um one of the things that that means an artist needs to really keep in mind when they're at the fair is you know you never know what the next conversation will bring you never know who the next person you're speaking to is um so just really trying to be mindful as hard as it is to just let whatever the previous conversation, good or bad, go and focus on that next person and be present with them. Um, because, you know, it could be that the last conversation didn't go quite as well as you hoped and, and and you know, that, that leads to a slump. Or you've just made a sale when you're walking on cloud nine and therefore you're kind of distracted and, and, and you let someone who was worthy of your attention um, pass you by. And it's a hard thing to do. So I think it's just, that's why I'm always trying to remind artists of that um to go into the fair with that knowledge and that mindset that you, you know there's people in the room there's 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 value to be had from an in encounter with those people so always be ready for it as yeah. best you can you are allowed to go to the restroom and you are allowed to have <laughs> okay. um yeah uh, be quick <laughs> just hurry um, there's a time actually <laughs> i am wondering do artists go solo or do they get helpers to come along and help with well, their sales and yeah all that sort of stuff? it's a good thing Ross did you have any you, you were solo weren't no, you I was solo but yeah. there was an amazing artist near us called Franca Turin and she yeah. had a helper and it worked amazingly I was like I need to do that next time yeah we over the last 12 months we've spent we've we've there was a time during COVID when we were limited with you know the number of people could, we could have through the door um and so in that period of time, we were saying to artists, you know, if everyone brings a helper, then that's a hundred people less that we can have in the room. <laughs> so we were almost in a, in a mindset of discouraging at that stage. But obviously since then, now, we, you know, now that that's not an issue, hundred percent, it's something that we say, if you can, uh, you know, then do, because they can be really helpful just to be that extra person to keep you, you know, on the straight and narrow um, to, to speak to customers when you're busy in a you know in-depth important conversation that's gone on longer um and just yeah an extra pair of hands so it uh, you know not everyone does i would in terms of the split i would say you know maybe it's even 50 50 the, the, the number of people that will have a helper with them and it might be that it's just someone who drops in for an afternoon and and that's great for you to then feel like you've got someone to to share the burden with um so yeah it is something i would encourage if it's possible I was looking at applying for the next one with a friend. And so to do two artists in one stand, is that a yeah. common thing as well? It's not that common. It's possible. So we would just, mm. uh, both artists have to apply and mm. get selected. So that's, that's I suppose, the only real criteria. Mm. Um, it's not that common. Um, you know, there, there might be, because if it's about moral support, what we might try to do... <laughs> You know, we can't really promise things up top, but say, you know, if you want to have your own space and, you know, let your name, you know, your work and your name stand out for itself, you know, you can put in a request with us to say, can we be near mm. each other, can we be next to each other so that we can then factor that in? Because, you know, we understand that that is, um, having that support is helpful. Um, and I, cause, because I did see some other artists last year with that arrangement and I was thinking it was quite good because it's almost like having a staff member. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, it's yeah. another way of solving that problem. That's all. But I think when people haven't done the show before, they think that's really key to have that person alongside with them. And then it's only once they do the show and they realise, oh, 
you know, like you with Franca. Oh, well, Franca, yeah. you, know, you know, I've got, she's done the show before. I think she did um, the May show last year, if not December the year before. Um, and you can then, you know, have someone who who knows the run of play. Mm. So I think when people get there, they realise, oh, actually, I'm surrounded by friends now. Yeah, <laughs> it's so oh. true. The community is just so beautiful, honestly. It was such an amazing experience. So, yeah. Yeah, amazing. You're really selling it, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I would appear biased. I should probably let you do all the talking. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I honestly loved it so much. So yeah. I, as a neutral party, I just think it was an amazing experience. So, mm-hmm. you know, for people who um, are looking to build their art sales, make connections with other, with art buyers, meet them in the flesh, because especially when we're selling online primarily, we just don't yeah. have those conversations. And so we are limited in a way. We, we, we can't gauge people's interest and see where their eyes go first with our art, for example. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I, I do think it's yeah, a great opportunity. A you learn a lot about your work and I mean you you both talk a lot about kind of momentum in your in your practice and I think that's where you know you can feel that you're ticking all the boxes because your following is growing online and you know your your, your social media is a you know channels have traction Mm. but I think it's then another arm in that whole mix of putting yourself out there because you've got this following okay where's the opportunity for them to come and see your work in person because you know, you can guarantee only a small fraction of them have bought work from you at that point. So what's the next thing to to kind of capitalise that, bring those people into a physical space where they can see your work and, and there's a more of a natural environment to buy work. And then obviously adding more people into the mix. That So it's, you know, feeding that funnel of, you know, they might not be ready to buy from you at the fair then, but then they're following you and then they're on that same journey, but they've had the chance to see your work in person. So, um, yeah, it's just it's all about just continually thinking where are, where is a potential customer and how can I get in front of those people? Mm. And, and clearly an art fair is a place where people are specifically going to engage with and discover artists, uh, especially at the other art fair where our whole remit is that you're not just seeing the work, you're meeting the person, which I accept is not necessarily what every artist wants to do is meet any other people. No. Some of them will be quite happy <laughs> tucked away in the studio and never never see the light of day um but it's in, it's an important way to to move the 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 art business forward i agree i agree and you know stepping outside of your comfort zone mm. it's a lot yeah. to be said yeah. for that yeah yeah and i think with the art too like they're buying into you they're buying into your story and all of that sort of stuff um luke would you have any tips for um artists on like how to connect with customers how to have those sales um sales conversations i feel like that's yeah. a huge stumbling block that is true yeah and i think again you know a lot of it is a, an exact science which then means there is always going to be trial and error and every customer is going to be different but certainly um you know being present you don't need to necessarily you know someone comes towards your 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 stand they're looking at your artwork be present but you don't have to be in their face you don't have to immediately jump on a person to scale them away i think particularly (laughs) in australia i don't think that necessarily goes down very well (laughs) in america that they're a little bit more comfortable with Okay, let me uh, let me tell you all about it. And and I don't think we necessarily operate in that way um, in terms of the buying experience. But give them their space and then be available. Be be have a smile. You know, Roz always has a smile on her face. So she, she's a natural at it. Mm-hmm. But you know, you be there with a warm smile. I'm here if you have got any questions. I think having and it goes back to what we were saying before in terms of writing about you know your you know whether it's your bio, having just a little thing that you've got in your mind that you can fall back on if someone comes to you and just says, oh, tell me about your your art. And, and there's no more content. You know, ideally you get a, a slightly more narrow question than that. But if they hit you with just, oh, you know, how did you get started? What's this about? You know, <laughs> something really broad. You've got something that you, you almost rehearsed, but to the point where it's natural and it's, you know, not overly salesy, but the when caught in the moment, when you're the rabbit in the headlights, you can just go, oh, well, this is this is my journey. Uh, I think that's really helpful. I think um, actually a big part of it, it starts from before the fair opens. Yeah, you know, how you hang your work um, is a really key part of that, that um, you know, 
the impact you'll make on visitors. And I think there's often a temptation for artists to go, I brought all my work and there's no white space left on the walls and you can see everything I've ever created. And actually you're really doing a disservice to every single artwork that you're showing because you're not giving it the space to to breathe, for it to connect with someone and, and less is definitely more in that, that sense. Um, so yeah, it starts with how you present the stand. Um, what are some of my other tips? I would also say sometimes, and this is a really, you know, tread with caution tip, but I think there's a hesitance to actually turn the conversation into a sale. Uh, and when someone's clearly engaged with your work for a period of time, and especially if they've engaged with one particular piece of your artwork that you have on show, um, that at some point it is okay to then say, you know, well, it's yours if you want it. You know, if you want to take it home with you, that's okay with me. And 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 I think there's, you know, that is something in sales generally, asking for the business creates a permission structure for the person to say, yes, actually, I will. And, you know, and everyone at an art fair, that's the beauty of it. We're all getting a bit carried away. I have to spend four days there. So I may, you know, I haven't got any money at the moment. I'm not buying anything. <laughs> <laughs> by day three or day four that you know i've caved somehow but what we need to do is you know try and just um nurture that customer into you know just that extra five percent to get carried away and go you know what i do want it so doing that in a soft way um you know i remember someone saying to me once that they 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 used to say oh you know i think this is the, the point in the conversation where i'm meant to ask whether you want to buy it you know again it's not like yeah. you want it let me rack it up like you know it, <laughs> well, you shall i fill in this form yeah yeah for what's you? your name again <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so that's definitely <laughs> worth keeping in mind but as i say only when it's appropriate i think some of those are some of the main ones yeah no i really really like that i think you know so that's all about how to make it a good sort of fair experience to get mm. your sort of bang for your buck. And, I, and you mentioned earlier also the sales piece. You know, I don't know if you remember right at the start of the conversation that, you know, you can't sort of guarantee the sales. And I think that that really resonated with me because you can't, right? You can't guarantee that. No one can guarantee sales. That's the decision by the buyers that happen to walk past at that time. Um, so there are so many other wins that you can have from a fair experience. Experience. And there are so many things that you can do to help to encourage those sales. But there has to be other markers of success in terms of an art fair experience, you know, yeah. like what other than sales, like obviously sales are a great sort of win. Um, but other than sales, what would you say like some of the top wins from an art fair experience would be for artists that you've seen? Yeah, um, that's an important question, because that's I, I think that's what we try and talk about much more than just sales because I think people know that instinctively but mm. I, I suppose just one addition to the sales mix is you know it's really not about four days it's about you know the sales that will come from the relationships you build um in that moment and having that face-to-face -face contact you're leaving much more of a lasting impression with those people than if they scroll past you on a phone um so it's longer term and it can mm. be a couple of years down the line they've been following you ever since and they've now yeah just bought their first home and they're ready to start investing in art. Um, where prior to that, they just had a passion for it. Um, so it's very much thinking about the long game in terms of where the real commercial value comes from. But then beyond that, we've talked about the artist community. I think having a network of creatives in your, you know, in your locker that can support you on your journey, that you can support on their journey is really, really valuable. I think, you know, you two are often tested testifying to the value of that and the, the, what you have for each other expanding that network of people you know we've had artists that have gone on to do group shows where you know every single artist involved in that group shows they've met at the other art fair and actually the, D, the you know the dj that's playing at that that event was at the other art and it has become this kind of yeah. thing that's then there's a tangible thing that we've done we've that's been born out of that experience I think understanding about your practice, you know, there might be things about your work that you, even you yourself don't realize. And it, it, it is quite hard to talk about that with artists because you do have to be open to that. And it, it doesn't mean it has to, it doesn't have to mean anything. You can just dismiss a, a, a different opinion that someone has, but it might still be valuable to understand how people are connecting with your work. 
um, because it may, you know, make you think about you think about your work differently. It may take you in different directions. Um, it may just spark other inspiration. And it's just, you know, I think it's really helpful to, yeah, to understand how your work is resonating with people. So that's a kind of market research thing. If you want to give that a, a, a label. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like I say, I think some of those other skills around presenting your work, displaying your work, talking about your work, those are kind of you getting your kind of shell of your business together. Um so I think those are probably all the main things. But yeah, just, you know, I believe in the power of personal connections and they can lead to anywhere. So it's just you're having tons of those in a really short space of time and just being open to whatever they may bring. You know, again, it may not be a direct sale, but it might be a collaboration with another artist that's just visiting the fair. Or it might be, a, you know, a brand agency wants to commission you for something. You know, there's all these other different things that come from the show. You know, one of our artists last year uh, designed an album cover from someone they'd met at the other art fair a couple of years before uh an artist last year was invited he does photography in these kind of abandoned uh landscapes so they're, they're really cool and very uh kind of eerie and um melancholy but he met someone who had the keys to a nuclear bunker in australia that he got to go and then visit and take photos of you know it's wow. just all, these chance encounters that you know are really memorable and special to uh, to those artists is um, yeah what you get from getting in front of that many people um, and then actually just a, a very soft one that you know it doesn't sort of necessarily change your business one way or another but I think there's something potentially very powerful about having a connection with a person who buys your work because there might be a really personal story that is the reason that person has connected with your work and, you know, it can be a very emotional, raw connection that and you hear why it means something. To, and, and you would rather that artwork go to that person and it have that level of deep connection than someone just go, oh, yeah, just chuck that one in the pile. I've got loads of them. So you don't get that when you're selling online, I suppose. And I think that's where it, it really kind of for an artist, it, it can really offer that sense of oh, this is why I do it. This is why I do what I do. And it, that's and I can I can you know i can live off that moment for a next you know that'll keep me going for the next few years um yeah, yeah. Things that are maybe the less obvious things that can come from from that type of experience at an art fair so what i want to know is laura are you going to sign up are you going to apply <laughs> have we convinced you i know yet? well i said that earlier in the conversation you've really done a great job to, <laughs> to sell it join, um, join. <laughs> i do have a question in terms of um, presentation, stall presentation, the types of work um, that you're seeing in the fair, are they larger scale finished paintings? Are they um, framed, unframed? Uh, Are they prints? Are they small works? Are people selling products or cards or like what what is? Yeah, so it's a really good question. I think we would... um... You know, we like having the range and there being different price points and that we can we can look after a, a, a whole array of different buyers. And I think that's an important role that we play in the wider art market, that we're bringing people in that may not have invested in art before and that they can start their journey with us. And then actually what happens is the other art fair then becomes the place where they buy art. And, it, you know, in year one, it may only be a print for a couple of hundred dollars and by year three it's you know a five thousand dollar original piece and that's the journey we want to take our, our audience on and that's why a lot of the programming do is, is about making art accessible and and sort of reminding people this you know this is a fun environment this is a social environment this is a very tolerant and inclusive environment all of those things are, are really important uh, but in terms of what artists should bring i would always say if an artist was asking me that question one-on-one it really would depend on their practice and what they want the show to be about and what they want their their practice to be about and, and what they want to sell so for some artists you know we've had where you know artists where they've shown one large artwork original piece that they at the price point it was at they wouldn't really expect to sell in, in the other art fair you know it's you know twenty thousand plus dollars which is generally i would say beyond the reach of most of our our sales although we do have some at that level uh, but they just wanted to use it as a way to uh, build a following, really show their signature piece they had 
um, use it to then, when they, their solo came later in the year, find new people that they could get to a solo that could then buy from a broader array of their work. So that, that might work for that artist. Would I, would I advise at the average artist at the fair to do that? No, I would not. Um, but if that makes sense for that person, then absolutely do. But if you if you offer a range of different sizes and price point, that does give you a greater reach of potential customers in that in that room. Um, so our general rule, if you're looking at it, I'm willing to do whatever makes the most sense for me to drive the highest volume and, and, and revenue of sales. That would be my advice. A br broader range of price points and sizes to cater to a broader range of people in the, in the room. There was an artist actually at the other art fair. I just looked him up quickly um, to remind myself exactly of his name, Wayne Harg. And I think he's on Instagram at Ann Karis, A-N-K-A-R-I-S underscore. And his artwork sounds a little bit like what you're describing. So he had some highly detailed yeah, oil yeah. painting. You do you know you remember his work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Next level. And that was dominating his stand. And then he had on the side some smaller standard sort of st standard sounds really bad, easier to purchase <laughs> yeah, yeah. artworks <laughs> that were landscapes and then he yeah. had prints. So he he was, it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's all a marketing game. Like it's how you want to present yourself, what purpose you want this yes. experience and, and, to do. You so. know, some artists would would steer clear of ever selling a, a print, even, a, you know, even in a limited edition form. So that's fine. And that, that Absolutely don't say, well, that's what other people are doing at the fair, therefore I should, if that's not the direction you want to go down. And that's a hard thing, because again, it's not an exact science. Should I offer prints? Should I you know, open myself up to that market? I, I was speaking to an artist a couple of weeks ago who um, does offer prints in the States, but her core market is here in Australia. So therefore, there's no prints to be had in this part of the world because she wants to focus on her, her originals here. Um, but yes, if you can offer prints and, and you know, some of our artists have, by selling a high volume of lower value artworks, have have it's been very, very lucrative at the show. So, you know, it does give you, there's obviously more people that are spending under $500 than there are spending over $5,000. The other uh, thing I definitely noticed as well, Luke, is that people... 100% wanted to take things away with them. So um, if people had, you know, order forms for prints that would be shipped to them later or anything like that, that did not fly. This market, yeah, they want to take everything with them. They want to hold the thing, purchase the thing, carry it home. Yes, and I think that that's definitely true. And the higher the price point, the less likely that is. So if you're buying something at, at the upper range, you know, the five to 10,000 range, then then you have a much greater appreciation for the fact that it may need to stay in place mm. uh, for the duration of the show. Um, and we do give artists control. I think that's the other thing, you know, we don't, um, we're not prescriptive about that. So if, you know, some artists are more prolific than others, if you've got a huge volume of work and you can then bring more work to the show and have it in storage um, and replace work as you go throughout the fair, absolutely that can be really valuable um, having, you know, A, not overcrowding the stand in the first instance, but then being able to still show more of that work as the weekend goes on. Um, whereas for some, if they've only, you know, what the way they have on display is their entire body of work at that time, then it might be sensible to say to someone on the opening night, great that you want to buy it, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to bring it to you next week. And then actually that artist then gets an extra bit of personal contact with the person who's now owned some of their work so that can be quite a nice way to kind of continue that relationship as well yeah great um so if artists want to come and visit the next fair um I believe the applications are closed but you've got one coming up in May we do yeah so the 16th and 19th of May we're in a new venue this year which is really exciting so White Bay Cruise Terminal in Balmain um so actually it's turned in it's quite interesting because White Bay now is going to become this kind of new precinct because we've got uh, the BNR is taking place on the same road as uh, the other art fair at that time. Um, so they've got this new space at the power station, which is literally on the same road. Um, so yeah, we're excited to be in a new area because we've kind of, uh, the, the the residents immediately surrounding the cutaway where we've been running the fair for the last few years, you know, we've done very well out of those people over the last, <laughs> big money with us. We might have saturated that part of town, so getting access to a whole new load of people just across the bay 
um, is great. And, you know, just means that for us as well, we're kind of, uh, we've got a new catchment of people, but also, you know, for us as a team, it's nice to kind of be looking at something completely fresh and um, not just doing a copy and paste on certain things. So yeah, 16th and 19th of May, come along. Yay. And we should drop in there that you, there are a few other locations as well. So you do Melbourne. I think you were thinking about Brisbane. Is that right? Uh, Am I so making that Melbourne, up? So we, uh, this year, it will just be <laughs> next year. We are looking at um, being back in Melbourne. Um, we're running in New York, LA, Dallas, Chicago, and London. Um, so we are, you know, there is opportunity, especially once artists get a bit more established and have done, you know, we've seen some artists that have done a few fairs with us here, um, have built up that following and now we're looking for that next opportunity and are going to, you know, particularly LA, which is the slightly more convenient location out of that array of pla uh, places. Um, yeah. And obviously then you've got a format that, you know, you know, it's a different team that will run each of the different regions, but, uh, they know, you know, fundamentally what you've got what you're expected to do and how it will work is 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 the same so at least you're kind of walking into a familiar environment if you've done the shows here in australia and you're ready to carve out a new audience overseas um so yeah i reckon you were lying about the coffee luke you did really well today <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point well maybe it's you two really rejuvenating me maybe i should we should catch up at 9 a.m every morning it will save let's me a chicken coffee let's do it <laughs> Amazing. So um, for our beautiful listeners today, if you would like to go and learn about the other art fair, um, there is information online. What is the website for you, Lou? The other art fair com is That's the website. Uh, That's the, it. And then forward slash artists apply, or there's a link to the artist apply page, which um, is there for you. Um, and yeah, reach out to myself or Maya. We're always happy to, to help where we can. Amazing. And many people in the not too distant future. Yay. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you leave us a review. Five stars, pretty please for good karma um, on Spotify. <laughs> um, and if you would like to leave a written review, do that over on Apple Podcasts. And we would love to give you a shout out as well if you have your own art account on Instagram. So definitely include that in your testimonial. So that's all for us today. Thank you so much, Luke, for joining us. Thank you for having me. And yeah, I keep doing what you're doing. because It's great to have something like this to help support artists. You know, it, you know, that's what we're all about is how, how can we make people's art careers more sustainable? And what you two are both doing is a really valuable tool in that. So yeah, keep it up. I'd say. Oh, thank you. I reckon we'll have him back. What do you think, Laura? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that was really great. Uh, let us know your feedback from the episode, what your takeaways are too. Amazing. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.